Sunday morning, the day after that amazing time meal. And uh, I'm trying to get out early-ish today. Been, been kind of, my, my time has been shifting later and later, which is not gonna be a good thing for Monday morning, but just gonna head out to that coffee shop, Rokanini, and uh, chill out there for a bit, have my Sunday coffee. But first, I have to deal with this and take this down to the trash. And then we'll get outside and see what the weather's like. We got, it was supposed to be rainy today, but so far it doesn't look like it's going to be. So we're gonna have to figure out some decent plants in a pinch again. Oh, okay, I need more than two hands. Just sitting in the lobby here, this couch, which is right beside the door to go out. It's super handy because I can come down and sit here and tie my shoes every day which is what I do. Just slip them on upstairs, come down, and uh, and use the couch to, to sit and tie them up. And I think this is probably the fourth time I'm putting these keys in my bag, because I keep forgetting I need them. I'm putting them deep into the recesses of my bag so I don't lose them, which makes taking them out repeatedly like that super annoying. All right, let's go out and see what the weather's looking like. Looks like a mixed bag again today, kind of like yesterday. Looks like it's threatening rain a little bit more than yesterday, actually. And it's chilly, it feels like it's gonna rain. It's got that pre rain feeling. But uh, hopefully, it doesn't rain. <laughs> I don't want to get caught in the rain on the way back, even though I'm just around the corner. So, there's our entrance to our building. And this little like roundabout, that's the underground parking for the two buildings. And then here is Beatty Street, I believe it's called. Let's make this little walk down to the sidewalk. And then Rokanini is just over there. It's in the gray building over there. It's still early. They open at 8. It's 8.26, so I got out pretty good. I wanted to get out and be there for 8, but I'll take this over the last couple days. And hopefully it's not too busy yet. It's really nice and quiet here downtown in the morning. I noticed not a lot of people out, so it should be okay. Caffeine fix time. a little bit longer than I wanted because it started raining and now I'm really regretting not bringing my umbrella but what are you gonna do I guess get wet yeah that's what happens you get wet <laughs> so Nicole apparently got some plans for today um, that rain they were calling for did show up despite it looking like we might miss it this morning I wonder what she's got up her sleeves for us today <laughs> Nicole had some ideas for us on what we were going to do today uh, when I got back to the condo and we've picked one and we're on our way out and the sun has come out so I put the umbrella in my bag because I don't want to get caught in the rain again and I bet you it's not going to rain so if that's the case that will be my trick from now on mother nature is very fickle <laughs> the weather out here is kind of crazy it changes rather quickly um, so we're walking to lunch. We picked the lunch spot. It's over on the other side of the creek, but it's more, it's a new area we haven't been to before. So we're gonna be walking over the bridge that goes over Granville Island uh, and the restaurants on that side. And our first site, or I guess our site for today is over there. So we're just making our walk. It's a good, what, hour walk? Yeah. Hour walk. 
but we'll show you the bridge. That should be pretty interesting. to be healthy today. Well, my version of healthy. We are at Pot Pot. Are you excited? I'm very excited. The food is all in front of us, so of course I'm excited. <laughs> this is, uh, what is the name of this place? Little Sheep Pot Pot. Yeah, Little Sheep. I've seen Little Sheeps um, a few times before. Down in San Francisco, I remember it being quite popular, and I know that they have, it's a pretty big chain, but for some reason we have never tried it. So today is the big day. Little sheep, here we are. Got a really good spread, eh? We got a, a combo meal, yes. I think, right? And it's, we, a del, it's a deluxe it's combo a deluxe meal. deluxe combo meal. And you get two broths, so we got a half and half pot with a uh, spicy broth, which looks like it's gonna kill us. It does, it's like lava. It, there's a lot of scary looking stuff floating in that one. And then a chicken broth, or their, their house broth. I mean, that has some interesting things floating in it, but doesn't look like it's going to kill us. Yeah, the lava one has, uh, it's just, it's glowing red. Yeah, it's got like a layer of red glowing oil on top. And then it came with a uh, meat, like there's uh, beef and lamb, sliced beef and lamb, um, chicken. There's b different di types of little balls. Cod like, and cod. There's cod, there's, there's shrimp. different little ball types. Yeah, there's beef, there's, sh there's fish, it looks like shrimp. Probably pork, uh, meatballs, and udon noodle, and some lettuce. It looks like a good spread. And they have a really decent sauce uh, booth over there. Decent. Mm, not so good. I would say meh. Meh, soft, meh. They sauce only had, station. They only had, I think, um, five. No, about six. But six. we've been to other um, hot pot restaurants where it's literally 20 to pick from. And then there was one we went to in China and that was... Oh, that was amazing. That was just... But that was in China. That's true. That was... The sauce alone was like a buffet. It was just something to behold because yeah. I'd never seen so many sauces in my life. But um, hopefully if they have six, it's six good ones. Yes. And uh, I'm very hungry. We walked, what, like an hour walk from our place over to here, over uh, the bridge. Um, and uh, that really worked up an appetite. It is now almost two o'clock. This will be our first meal for the day. So I think we should put the camera down for a bit and, and get cooking. Get cooking. All right, we've been going for a little bit here. We tried a bit of the chicken and I've been eating up all of the kimchi they have here. And it's a Szechuan style kimchi. It's very different than a Korean style kimchi. It's not as spicy and the cabbage is a little bit chunkier and it's actually really good. It's refreshing. It's more, it's got more of a pickled flavor than kimchi does. And like you can see, it's very white. It's not, it's not very spicy. But it's kind of like a good palate cleanser, I would say. And I'm going to go in for some beef. So we got the uh, thinly sliced beef. I'm going to put it into the spicy, the spicy broth. And there, it's already cooked. And try it with some saute sauce. Mmm, it's nice and soft. And just even being in that spicy broth for that little bit of time gave it a, a, a relatively good spice. Just getting the top up here on our broth. So yeah, that wasn't long enough really to impart too much of a spicy flavor to the beef, but we had some chicken going in there and uh, I was starting to get the spice. 
We're gonna keep going out of here. All right, it's time to try a dumpling. Do you know which dumpling you put in? Pork or shrimp? I think it's a pork shrimp dumpling. Oh, it's a mixture. Yeah. All right. So they just plop into the soup for three minutes, according to their menu. But Nicole said the Nicole said the secret trick is when they float, they're done. So this goes. I'm gonna try this in the spicy uh, spicy oil. I think that's a lot of spicy oil. <laughs> this might not go well for me. All right, let's try it. Mm. That's really good. It has a really good texture. They left the shrimp lumpy in there still, so you're getting bites of shrimp in and around like that minced pork. And that spicy oil didn't kill me, which is really good. Enjoying this so far. Well, this place is really good. We really enjoy hot pot. We don't have it a lot, um, so this is a good treat. And it's, I'm gonna try some of the cod. So I cooked the cod in the um, original broth, not the spicy broth. But so far, I've been using the spicy broth more. It's got a really good flavor, and it's not overpowering in spice. So I think I'm just gonna eat this without any sauce and see how it is. Mmm. Wow, that fish is really good in that in their uh, original broth. Mmm, nice and soft, I guess because of the way it's cooked. It just kind of falls apart. It has a good salty flavor. I think that's what I'm liking is I'm getting the salt from the broth uh, in the fish. That's really good. We did some fried tofu. We did the fried tofu in the spicy broth. Oh, it's not fried tofu. It's fish tofu. What is fish tofu? Is a tofu made from fish and not soybean? Therefore, it's not tofu? That is confusing. It looks like tofu. It's firmer than tofu. It's, it's, it looks exactly like tofu. Let's try it with the peanut sauce. Mm. That goes really well with the peanut sauce. Did you try the tofu with the peanut sauce? Mm. Mm. Yeah, it has a different sort of texture than normal tofu. It's interesting. I'm gonna go spicy on this one. Mm. That's good, but I think the peanut butter works better. Peanut butter. Well, that's what they called it. I guess a sauce, like a peanut sauce made with peanut butter. What's next? Are the dumplings done? Yeah, floating. All right, there's some dumplings here floating. Let's see if I can get one out with my chopsticks. It's a dumpling. It's the same dumpling as uh, last time, except this time it's cooked in the spicy broth. Mm. That's also, oh, the spice is coming through a lot more because those have to cook for two minutes and it's really taking up the spicy broth. <sighs> well, I'm gonna go find some water. We fished the uh, shrimp balls out. They come with their own indicator of what they are when they're done. They turn pink. So there's no mixing these ones up with the fish or the uh, cuttlefish balls. Let's try these shrimp balls. So I'm just gonna go the whole thing, no sauce. Mm. That's good, it has a good uh, texture. They didn't completely mash the shrimp up to nothing. There's still, uh, still a bit of like shrimp chunk, like chunks of shrimp in it, it's really good. Right, we're nearing the end of our meal here, so I think we're gonna hunker down and finish this off. We're nearing the end of the meal here, and usually when you finish out a hot pot meal, you'll get a bunch of greens, like we've got some cabbage and some lettuce they gave us, and some kind of noodle. And you usually just throw that in, cook it up a bit, and then that's sort of what you'd eat to finish off the meal once everything else is gone. So I've got some lettuce that I've cooked in, in the broth, and some udon noodles, they gave us udon today. 
So this was cooked in the original broth. Wow, the udon really absorbed the flavor of that broth. You got a, a, like the broth has got a nice uh, saltiness, kind of a chickeny flavor. Kind of reminds me of like a bouillon chicken, because I guess because of the saltiness. But yeah, that's a really good broth. There's some ginseng floating in there and some other things. I don't know what this stuff is. Like some, uh, it kind of looks like a nut of some sort, some kind of spice. But there's a few things like that floating in there. Uh, and there's go goji berries, which is supposed to be really healthy. So hopefully that broth is healthy for us, as well as delicious. There's one last bit to this meal that I'll show you after I finish these noodles. So the last part to the meal is a dessert. Dessert. Uh, it is a jelly. I like it. Nicole doesn't like it. Um, she doesn't like anything that moves, like jiggles. <laughs> it makes her stomach turn. So this is a lychee goji berry pudding, they call it. And it's kind of like a jello. Mm. The majority of it is like lychee flavor like a lychee flavored jelly. And then they just drop some goji berries and some little pieces of lychee right in the top. That's very refreshing after this hot steaming meal we've had today. We're done. <laughs> that was an amazing meal. Very filling, I'm stuffed. And we told you it was a healthy meal. Yeah, it was pretty healthy, wasn't it? I thought it? so. I, I tried a little bit of that spicy broth and that was uh, a little over the top for me. Yeah, I tried it too and I didn't like the spicy broth. It actually got bitter when you mm. tasted it at the end, like straight up. Yeah. The um, original broth, that was really tasty. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to be a little puffy tomorrow though because I think that thing was loaded with sodium. Oh, it's definitely. But sometimes you have this broth and it's just salty but this one actually had flavor to it it had a nice chinese herbal taste mm. to it from the herb from the herbs the and the ginseng. ginseng and the goji berries mm -hmm. and that gave it a nice flavor as well as the other two yeah it was really good i'm really happy we came here yeah. good call nicole she found another winner <laughs> and i'm glad we wrote it off originally because it was a chain store and we weren't but I'm glad we gave it a chance. Mm -hmm. So we've got to like finish up here and really move it to our uh, our attraction. Or it's going to close on us. It is, yes. What time is it? It's like past three now. I think it closes at five. Yeah. And it's a good half an hour a bus ride from here. No two viewers who don't usually have Chinese hot pot. It takes a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been here for over an hour about. All right, we'll see you later. attraction for the day. We're at the BT Biodiversity Museum. And it was a short bus ride from the restaurant. We ran across the street to catch the bus. We almost missed it. Uh, it was about 25 minute ride over to UBC. We're in the um, University of British Columbia area. It's a really beautiful area here. We had a short walk through some of it to the actual museum here from the bus stop. And it's a really nice campus. Um, very different feel than what I had downtown Toronto. Um, you excited? I'm excited. I don't know very much about this uh, museum. I just bought tickets because I thought it was a natural history museum. I hope I'm right. <laughs> kind of looks like it. I see a huge skeleton in there. So let's go inside and figure out what the deal is. We made it in. We got our tickets. This huge complex, it's kind of deceiving when you see this up here, but apparently when you go downstairs, this looks like this whole field here underground is the uh, museum. But the first thing that greets you when you walk through this door to the museum is this ginormous blue whale skeleton hanging from the ceiling. This thing's massive. Some interesting factoids. I've seen skeletons like this at various museums in the past. I never really thought about it, but the, the tail is always missing. And that's because the tail is made of a, more of like a connective tissue that, that I guess is not, doesn't, isn't part of the skeleton, doesn't have bones in it, so it just completely disappears. And you're just sort of left with like a normal looking animal tail. And this rib cage here 
would house a, a heart the size of a small car. Pretty amazing. And you can see these little bones over here hanging down from the, from the tail. So those little bones are pelvic bones. Those are what's left of uh, the rear limbs that this whale's ancestors used to walk on land. I had factoids. That was very interesting. I didn't have to read any of that, but now I know. Well, okay. That's, we're not doing a good job. What do you mean? This is supposed to be a whale, a whale it. feed. It's there. He's under construction, but this place is amazing. Oh my god, I don't know why we only budgeted an hour, but we need so much more time because we've only touched the tip of the iceberg and it's time for us to go. We watched a movie about the whale. Um, I think Michael would do a better job describing what we saw, but that was a fascinating documentary and there's just so much to see here. Nicole was right, this place is amazing. I can't believe we only gave ourselves an hour here. Uh, I guess we just didn't know what to expect. And we'd watched a video we probably shouldn't have watched because that was a, what, that took us a good 20, 25 minutes. And we only had 40 minutes at that point. So we're just looking around as quick as we can. But I think the, the most amazing thing is the whale. And that video that we saw was how they unearthed the whale skeleton and reconstructed it and all of the uh, trials and tribulations they went through trying to get it back together. That was a really fascinating uh, movie or documentary, I guess. Uh, and there's a lot of interesting things here, nature-wise. You can see a really cool bird exhibit behind me. But uh, we're gonna go as, see as much as we can in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> shelves and shelves and shelves of exhibits as far as the eye can see. Within each shelf, drawers pull out. So literally, you can be here for months and you'll still be seeing something new. This place is incredible. Definitely need more than an hour. It was that fondue. It ruined the hot pot. The, it was the hot pot. There's a wealth of information in this place, as Nicole showed you. Just. I'm thinking of a movie. I think like in the Matrix, if you remember the Matrix when they went to get their weapons and the, the, wep the, the room just sort of expanded into all of these cabinets of weaponry. That's what this reminds me of. It's just like you stand at the end of the tunnel and you just see like cabinet after cabinet after cabinet of, of stuff to come and take a look at. And then when you get to those cabinets, you kind of just look at them and think, oh, there's some interesting stuff like behind me here. But then you can pull out all those drawers, like Nicole was saying. But it's neat to have these panels every so often uh, with a nice vibrant picture and information that gives you a little bit of a, a break from all the black cabinetry that they have here. Um, breaks up the monotony a little bit. Well, we came to the very end of the, the exhibit here. Um, not by way of looking at everything, <laughs> just we came to the back to check it out. And there's a huge slice of a tree trunk here, and it's 775 years old, a red cedar. So this tree actually started its life in the year 1175. And someone was just explaining to us that they used to think that every line here represented a year, but it's actually every combination of light line and dark line. So I'll just try and zoom in here to show you. So each dark and white line represents a year and they could tell from the white lines, the light lines, how thick they are, the, the kind of conditions the tree was in when it was growing that year. So these ones here, which are really thick, 
they probably had a really good summer of growth. And these ones were, there's not a whole lot to the uh, light thickness, probably didn't have a great summer. But it's crazy to think that this tree grew for 775 years yeah. and then they think it was probably cut down and then whoever cut it down that's decided to take a couple slices which is amazing so there was a guy over there i guess he's a student here probably who was uh, covering up some of the panels and we asked him what's up with that and he was explaining that the insects there are very sensitive to light so they have to cover them every night and turn off all the lights here because they only last about a year before they have to replace them all right, we're being asked to leave. Well, not very forcefully, mind you, but uh, it's past five now, so we're gonna head out because they close at five. And uh, we should have come here much earlier, but I'm really glad that we got a chance to see it. And if we're ever back in Vancouver, this would probably be high on the list of a repeat that we'd wanna come and see. Uh, the, just the whale exhibit up top really blew me away. And I hadn't even seen what was down here yet. Uh, and then that video was really interesting just showing how they had to like, try and get these bones ready because they were saturated with whale oil. And that was their biggest challenge, was trying to get rid of all this whale oil so the skeleton didn't smell and was all rancid and whatnot. But um, they were a year late getting it ready and installing it here. I'm really glad they went through all that hassle because I'm really impressed to see that. I think Nicole wants something. Something that also shouldn't be missed while you're at the museum here is they have the official exhibits, but they have a little mini art gallery at the side at the that runs along the edge of all the black filing cabinets. And the work that's been curated here has really been like really, really good art. It's really cool looking. Nicole was just mentioning to me that we come to these amazing exhibits and these museums and we stand here and stare at this stuff, but we don't really think about how much of an effort it was for them to get it to put together. And the, the video we watched downstairs really highlighted how much troubles they have and what they went through so that we could enjoy what, what's hanging here for us in this lobby. On top of all those issues they had getting rid of the oil out of all the bones to set up this whale exhibit, when they finally delivered the head, the skull of the animal, they had one last big hurdle ahead of them and that was trying to get it into the building. And obviously the doors are too small for something that large. And what they had to do was remove a pane of glass here and get it through the frame, the window frame of the side of the building here. And even that was very challenging. They had to build a custom sort of uh, pulley rig uh, system that they were able to sort of like twist and turn the head as they pushed it through so they couldn't keep it locked in one position they had to keep adjusting it on its custom rig and they finally got it in and that was really their last little struggle before they could open the museum here to the public this is a really good exhibit, highly recommended. We both recommend it. Uh, if you're in Vancouver and you have some time, I would definitely recommend coming and checking out this attraction. The museum here is amazing. Give yourself longer than an hour. We way underestimated how much time we were gonna need here. You could easily spend an afternoon between checking out the whale, which I did for a bit too long, and then watching the movie. They have various movies going on down there, and luckily we caught the one on how they got this exhibit together. That's why we knew all these factoids to share with you. Uh, but then downstairs, there's just tons and tons of stuff to check out and learn about. Really great, really great museum. Uh, and now we're done, and we're here in UBC. It's very quiet right now. It's a beautiful campus. I said that before, but it just blows my mind. We just kind of walked into a new section of it. It's just amazing. Um, but we really got to get going back. We have to catch the bus and get back home and figure out dinner and I have to work tomorrow. So we are going to uh, figure out how we get out of here. I was right. Uh, explain please. <laughs> <laughs> when we were in the actual museum, Mike was asking me, what is this place? What's a biodiversity museum? And I said, it's a natural history museum, of course. Meanwhile, I had no idea at the time. But now I know <laughs> I was right. 
Nicole had a really great idea today, and that was that we should venture outside of our normal haunt that we've been in. Well, we've been here for the last couple weeks. So we've been spending most of our time downtown. That's where we're living. That's where we're exploring. And so she picked this museum to come check out because it's out farther away from where we're used to. And that gives us the opportunity to see a different angle of Vancouver and the UBC campus has given that to us. It's an amazing space. It's really green and beautiful. Uh, the air is really fresh out here. And it just gives you a renewed energy to come out and see something different. It makes me want to go to school. Yeah, it's true. I said, we said to each other that we want to go back to school and somehow get into UBC. Uh, but yeah, it's something to consider if you're in a similar situation and you're just sort of staying in the same area. Look for things outside that area that are interesting because that will draw you out, to, out there and then you'll get a chance to explore it. in the distance when we left the museum and we tried our best to get down to the water but we kind of got stuck here uh, we followed the mall there's a huge long mall in the university grounds here that heads towards the sea but um, we, we've come to sort of a dead end and it's this really gorgeous house which um, well it's not a house I don't know exactly what it is but it's a building they use for functions it looks like but the gardens and the grounds around it are incredible it's, Amazing, I can't believe the gardening that must go on here to keep it looking so immaculate, but it's really, really beautiful. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't charge you admission to come into these gardens because they're so incredibly well kept and the fragrant the smell right now, geez. Oh yeah, the smell, it's like, oh. what is that smell? And Nicole's like, the flowers. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, this is an amazing spot. I wish we could see the ocean, but I think we'll just keep trying to like weave our way across here and see if we can get a better vantage point out. Michael. There's there's this amazing sign here on the on the uh, railing that shows you all the sights you would be able to see if all these trees didn't exist. But I, we'll find the we'll find the water. I can see it through the trees. Over at that really fancy looking building, there was a couple playing with their dog. And uh, we're so desperate to get down to the water that we asked them if they knew how we could get down. And they told us how to walk back out to the main road and sort of take the main road down a little bit. And you'll come to a path. And that's what we have found. We found a path that takes you down to the water. So we're gonna go and do that. Our plans are sort of in flux today. We're supposed to be on our way back to Granville to pick up some ingredients for, for the week, but this is far more exciting. Here's the path. We are going to follow it as far as it takes us and hopefully we'll have some good views out over the sea or the ocean. We're heading down to Tower Beach. So we're going to follow this down as far as we can and hopefully we'll get a really good view out over the ocean. Because I was just commenting to Nicole a little bit earlier today that I can't believe that we haven't gone to the ocean yet. Like that was one of the things I was most excited about was heading to the ocean and just sitting and watching out over the ocean and also Stanley Park. Like I really wanted to go to Stanley Park and explore it again as that was the only thing I'd ever really seen of Vancouver in the past and that we've done neither yet and we've been here for two weeks. So we're finally going to get one of those ticked off. The pathway now has turned into stairs. That's well, gonna be a beautiful little hike down, down to the water. The area that we're heading down is actually called Wreck Beach. Hmm. I hope Why? that's not an ominous, that's an ominous name, but hopefully Wreck Beach will be a pretty beach. Mm -hmm. And clothing is optional on the beach, but required on the trail. 
Okay. So, so we won't see any nudies on the trail at least. So at least we won't, okay, so the deal is we won't strip while we're going down the trail, but once we get to the beach, our bets are off. <laughs> respect for these old cedar trees after seeing that stump back in the museum and seeing that that, that, stump, that size of that stump was 775 years in the making. It looks like there's a few casualties in here unfortunately. Uh, some old cedar trees look like they've they've seen better days or are gone. Just some stumps remain and there's a couple that look relatively freshly cut because there's a lot of um, sawdust still around. But I wonder how old some of these ones are that, that are no longer with us. This is a really great unexpected little adventure that we weren't anticipating. Nicole's idea of coming out here was bang on. <laughs> uh, she was hoping we would get to see some new stuff to explore and, and she's, she's getting her wish. I think we're almost down now. She's ahead of me. She, she's way down there. We're getting closer and closer to the beach. Do you hear what I hear? I hear the ocean. Yep, waves, crashing waves. I can finally hear them. We're gonna see the nudists and the oceans. Yeah. All in one go. <laughs> We're almost there. coming out to this museum, Nicole. I can't believe what was waiting for us at the end of today. I know, we were so impressed with the museum that we thought, you know, it wasn't gonna get any better. And then it got so much better. Yeah, this is incredible. This is exactly what I wanted. This was like top three on my list of things I wanted to do when we came to Vancouver, was just sit at the ocean here and watch big boats and watch the waves and just take in the sea air. It's amazing. I'm so glad that we came out here. It's an it's like an isolated private beach just for us. Yes. We did see a dude who took the sign up on it. I can see the dude. You did? He's the guy that walked past us. I thought that was a windbreaker he was wearing. He was wearing a, a sweater but no pants. Oh. So his ass cheeks were hanging out the bottom. <laughs> is that what the look was for? That's why I gave you that look. I saw the look but I'm like, oh, is a windbreaker Well, he's funny? enjoying himself. After I saw that, I was like, I wanted to experience some of that, so I took my shirt off and just did some filming and some b-roll and some audio uh, shirtless and it was amazing. Having the sun hit my skin and the wind, it was or the fresh air I should say, it's not that windy really, but uh, yeah, it felt really good. Um, and we saw a seal. That's crazy, we're just sitting there and I saw this thing swimming along the shore and I'm like, is that somebody's dog? And then I saw it dive under. I was like, no dog I've ever known dives under the water. And then it got closer to us, like like right in front of us. And it was this little seal. The seal head staring at us <laughs> and it do dove again. So I think I got that on camera. Hopefully I can zoom in enough to sort of make it out. Uh, I can't believe after that cool like building that we saw with the amazing garden at the base of the mall that we were gonna go home. We're like, ah, we can't make it to the ocean. It's all blocked off. We'll just go home. I'm glad we asked that couple and they told us how to do it because this is crazy. The trail coming down was crazy. Yeah, through the old so, old forest it, down into down to the beach. It felt like a jungle experience, an ancient jungle experience with a nice uh, little staircase carved out for us yeah. and hand railings. Yeah, and the old there's some old cedars in there. I don't know if yeah. you noticed. Like, it smelled. Yeah, the smell reminded me of all, like all the Japanese onsens that we visited because it was so strong. Yeah, with all the cedar. Yeah. So, I really don't want to go, but no. we should go. We've it's, been here for an hour, like an hour? Oh, I was, yeah, probably an hour, because the museum closed at five, and then we basically made our way to the ocean here, 
and it is now 7.30 and I could stay here for another hour. The sun still has a good hour to set so we'll miss the sunset here. Yeah. I'm glad that we were we came at the time we did because it feels like we came at golden hour like the beach is golden and then the sky is still blue and you can still see mm. all the mountains with the snow capped in the distance and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, I'm staring past the camera because I'm looking at the view. <laughs> Pay attention, YouTuber. Okay, so it is onwards and upwards, yeah. like literally upwards. Yeah, I think we got to get going. We got to go find some food. We totally miss Granville. <laughs> Granville's closed. No donuts for me. No donuts for you. No, no groceries for us. So. Do you think um, people who watch our channel wonder why we need to get groceries so often? Because. Well, I think we've talked about the fact that. Back home, we go every week. We go on the weekend. We just get a whole bunch of stuff for the whole week, and uh, that's it. It's just kind of that's what you do. But we've always wanted to have an, a be living in a place where we could just easily walk out five, ten minutes somewhere, get some fresh food, go back and make it. And that's what we've been doing. So every couple of days, we've been going out, getting fresh food, and living that dream. Yeah. Um, the last few days, it hasn't been going out and getting food to make dream. It's the going out and eating food dream. Yeah. Totally. That's the other thing too, right? If we want to go out to eat at home, it's get in the car and drive yeah. somewhere. So taking advantage of that as well. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Okay, onwards and upwards for real. Yeah, let's go.